In Goodfellas, Martin Scorsese's visceral gangster opus, the director reveals the mob's inner secrets and his mother's recipe for the perfect red sauce. In prison, dinner was always a big thing. Welcome to Film to Table, where we explore the relationship between favorite films and delicious dishes. Join me in the kitchen and let's get cooking. You know, as a chef, one of the things that really draws me to Goodfellas are the food scenes. They're massive, big tables, sweeping scenes of a salami, prosciutto, mortadella, and all the wonderful sauces. Here to talk with me today about it, and I guess I've delved right into uh, Martin Scorsese's wonderful movie, is Brian Unger. Thanks for letting me in your kitchen. I love Goodfellas, or as I call it, murder and marinara. So what I've done here is I've taken a piece of veal, we've browned it in the base of a pan, taken some sausage, we've browned that as well. Then we need to add some other ingredients. You have a little bit of onion, keep your thumb behind, four fingers at the front, mm -hmm. and let the knife do the work. How many onions? Well, in the movie they mentioned uh, two onions. It seems to be a big point of contention. Vinny, don't yeah. put too many onions in the sauce. Just so that we're safe and that yeah. I'm good here, yeah, yeah. I just thought I'd cover, <laughs> <laughs> I'd cover my butt by bringing some <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to add too much onion because I love the flavor and sweetness and the acid that tomato brings. And you can always balance out that sweetness from the onion with a little bit of shaved garlic. Thought I would give this a go. And Scorsese has a very loving, intimate shot of this process, right? That the yeah. garlic is sliced so thin with a razor. So what's the purpose of slicing it so thinly? Why I think because it looks great in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> in all honesty, I could knock that out in 20 seconds flat and not have to worry about cutting my fingers off if I'm using a knife. Yeah, you just looked at me while you were wielding that, and yeah. I gotta say, that's risky behavior. Well, you know why? You gotta know what you're doing. So what we do here is basically sweat the onions until they become sweet. We've added the garlic, and you'll find this thinness that I've got them, they actually do start to melt down a little bit. So a couple of tins of tomato paste, some added water, and then we have tomatoes, and we've actually passed these through a sieve. So there's no tomato seeds in here because the seeds are actually bitter. What I'm gonna do this now is actually add your sausage back along with the veal. But the whole idea now is that we just bring this up to the boil and then we let it simmer, and the meat just starts to fall apart. I think if you sit down and you watch a movie like this, like it transcends you and think, I want to hang out with my mom. I want to cook a meal. Moms and home and family takes precedence over everything else. They're never too busy to miss a meal with mom. So there's a guy dying in the trunk outside. They're sitting down to this wonderful meal, right? Yeah. They're enjoying this. <laughs> yeah, because clearly before you bury someone out in the woods, yeah. you gotta have a good meal. Have a great meal. You know, you want to have the right energy. <laughs> you don't, you <laughs> never want to do that on an empty stomach. Yeah, plenty right? of protein, no. you gotta have plenty of protein. That's right. right? Build and repair your muscles. So I think that's what Scorsese's saying. Eat before you bury someone in the woods. That's it, oh my god, now that I worked that out. All right, so a couple of hours has passed. The meat has started to break down. You can see it's falling apart here. Mm -hmm. And now we can actually basically get straight into our meatballs. So we have some beef, some pork, and I have some veal. So you can put those straight in the bowl. Uh, to that, we're also gonna add an egg, garlic salt, brown chili pepper, pecorino romano, tomato sauce, a few seasoned breadcrumbs to this. You get in there with your nice clean hands. All right, something that's really been sort of bothering me for a long, long time is just the issue of ball size. It's up to you. Depends on what size ball you want to eat. All right. I think you've done a great job. Thanks, man. Paying homage to the original recipe as well, I think we're going to do straight into the sauce. Okay. I like the idea that they're about the size of a walnut. So we're looking at about that size there. Mouth. Okay, balls away. I also love how Scorsese paints this sort of portrait of this all access, the power that these guys have. And that was prison. Even when they weren't supposed to, they were able to work the system, including as much food as they wanted. There was lobsters, there was steaks, it wasn't just white wine, there was red wine. And another thing that Scorsese does to sort of show this idea of access is when Henry and Karen are entering the nightclub, and instead of going through the front door, they go through this sort of basement back entrance, right? And the camera follows them down in and tracks to show you that they go anywhere they want. Yeah. Right? He glamorizes it, because no chef's ever really gonna let you through their kitchen. In general rule, yeah. you should never walk through the kitchen. Don't walk through the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Too many liabilities, but sorry I dropped the knife in your heart. <laughs> but what I loved was when they come out into the nightclub and then there's a table being dropped in front of the stage, so everyone gets to see that, okay, we have royalty sitting in front of you, and I just think that really carries on with that power they were kings. So after about 12 minutes of cooking and your pasta's al dente, so it's still got a little bit of a bite to it, prison meals. What would yours be? 
Well, the funny thing about that is, is that spaghetti and meatballs would be my prison meal. I love pasta, I love meatballs, I love tomato, I love to anything tomato-y. Uh, I reckon mine would have to be probably roast chicken, because that was something that my mom did really well. So that's perfect for this movie, Ben. Tommy's mom is played by Scorsese's mother. You like cheese? Oh, I love it. Hey, it's a picture. Speaking of pictures, quite poignant to show that I've just Oh my God. Start a painting. Jason, that's so beautiful. What I love about this painting is that one bird's looking this way and the mm -hmm. other's looking that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little derivative. I've seen it somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. One is going east and the other one is going west. So what? Well, right. now that we're sharing like this, and yeah. I'm really feeling close to you, um, I yeah. wanted to show you that I've been painting too. <laughs> I see where this is going. Yeah. This is how I feel on the inside. Like I'm a clown, I amuse you. These balloons are floating. These are sort of my dreams. And these are the two dreams that just got killed and crushed. Funny how? How am I funny? Let's eat, man. Let's eat, Let's man. Let's do it. That's really right. good. That's really good. Because this looks amazing. You got to do this. Dude. Oh, yeah. You got you to do this. This is how it's done. Hey, mom. Where's the cheese? If you think about it, when you eat this pasta, you don't just go in and then and mince it around. I mean, you're not really, you're going and you're going to stab the pasta. Mm. So eat it in a violent way. Yeah, as much as you, yeah, you, you want to get it there. When yeah. you're looking at it, you're looking at the balls, you're looking at yeah. the prey. And don't worry about getting on your chin. Mm. 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 Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, they're good to meat balls, huh? Do the Mom! Mom! <laughs> that's, the only, that's the only telling you what I know. <laughs> For new episodes, recipes and more, visit lstudio.com.